All right, well, I've got some interesting news. I wouldn't consider it uh, good or bad, just interesting. A little discouraging, but interesting. Uh, this new penny oscillator that I made here, uh, penny number two, uh, runs on such small amount of input that I've been able to do some very interesting tests to see, uh, to see maybe uh, perhaps what's going on. And this test right here, what it is, it's a, an iron pyrite rock and then a strip of magnesium. And notice the point contact with the magnesium. Just the very tip of that little strip of magnesium is down there. And then you've got the semiconductor rock, the iron pyrite. And uh, it is running uh, this oscillator. There's the radio. And that just looks really great. You know, I'm thinking, oh, this is terrific. But that's not the reality of the situation. This is, uh, this is a galvanic thing here. That's all there is. And the reason is, is before I did this experiment, I sprayed water on that placemat with this ironing board water. It's just tap water we use for the ironing board. And I sprayed a little water on that, uh, that uh, surface right there, just a little bit and got that galvanic reaction to happen with as small a contact area as that. And that, to me, answers a few things. That you do not need a lot of water to make a galvanic situation happen. And there, there might be something going on with the diode characteristic of the, uh, the iron pyrite. And this will work with just uh, copper, but it works better with that iron pyrite. And that may be the uh, thing that we're noticing, is it just we have better galvanic cells used in the semiconductors. But this is galvanic. This is nothing more than a galvanic reaction. What is interesting is the small surface area that it, it needs to make this oscillator work. And this is working down below 1 milliamp right now. I'm sorry, 1, one microamp. This is probably... Um, 0.9 or 0.7 microamps that's still letting this oscillator run and uh, do its thing. So anyway, on these other cells that I've made here, these, these cells here that are running penny number one, penny number one is still holding the voltage that she had before I went on my trip, which is uh, about one point one volt and uh, I think perhaps what's happening is there's just enough heat and humidity that's getting into these cells because they're not sealed to make a very mild galvanic action like that because it doesn't take much it takes very little to uh, to cause these oscillators because they're so efficient to run and this thing right here that I made, this is a sealed one with epoxy. It's copper and magnesium. I've been watching it go down in voltage. And that indicates to me that there's a chemical reaction going on inside that cell that is slowly going to equilibrium. Now, if I heat this up, it comes back. But what I think what's happening is I'm taking the water molecules that are in those salts and releasing the water molecule to start forming the galvanic reaction again. And anyway, this was uh, interesting news today. And when I saw this happening with such a small, small contact area able to run this oscillator, it just kind of, the, all the red lights went on and the bells and the whistles kind of went, whoa, maybe what I'm seeing here is just a slowed down galvanic reaction. And anyway, I, it's, like I say, interesting news. Uh, to me, it's not good news because I was really hoping that I was on the trail to making a uh, full-blown semiconductor cell, like a solar cell. But now I'm, I'm backtracking. I don't think so. Anyway, that's just my two cents on these things. And, and uh, penny number one and penny number two. Two cents. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just speculating, but um, that's my thoughts today.